What is up, Sooner Nation? I am Casey Mallon, and you are now, come on, get with me now, in the Sooner State of Mind. Make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcast and Spotify. Bet Online is your number one source for the NBA Finals and Stanley Cup Finals this season. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slots games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Use promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. The game starts here. On today's show, it's a celebration. Softball is going to lead off as it was a fourth straight natty for Patty. We recap OU softball unprecedented back-to-back-to-back-to-back national championships. And what makes it even sweeter, it was done by sweeping the number one ranked Longhorns. Oh, poor horn. We also check in with SEC move-in day. That's on July 1st. It is right around the corner, and there's some major activities planned around the campus and the state for the big move. We also check out the schedule for the 12-team college football playoff, and let me tell you, people, it is good. We talk some conference paydays, some EA Sports paydays, and in addition to the quarterback room, some misguided tear talk and we remember the alamo wow packed show packed show let me have a little sip of my poppy probiotic sodi if poppy's listening there is a sponsorship available for you reach out sooner state of mind you can find us how we doing people we come down a little bit we've been riding high oh yeah because normally We start the show with football talk. But when your softball team makes history or herstory, you let them bat lead off. And that's what we are doing today. For the fourth consecutive year, the Oklahoma Sooners are national champions. That is right. The number two Sooners are the first D1 school to win four consecutive softball national titles thanks to their sweep of the number one ranked Texas Longhorns, beating those horns eight to three in game one, and then eight to four for the sweep in game two. Now, before we move forward, let's go ahead and go back. Let's not forget, Florida beat the crap out of the Sooners, nine to three. And I don't remember the last time I saw this team get a beat down, if ever, especially with this core. How would they respond? How do they always respond? Kenzie says it, man. They get punched in the face. They get up. They're ready. And the second game against Florida, it wasn't looking much better. Sooners went down early, and it looked like that magical run was going to come to an end. But when it looks the darkest, that's when that Sooner magic starts to do its thing. Sooners down 5-2 after 3. But did I mention these Sooners are battle-tested? They fought their way back to get the game tied, forcing extra innings. And stop me if you've heard this before, a walk-off home run. Jada Coleman in the eighth inning. Sooners didn't lead this game in regular. It wasn't until the eighth that they got the lead. They just kept battling. Got that huge win, and it propelled them to the title. They won their eighth consecutive elimination game at the Women's College World Series. That is tied for the longest all-time streak with Florida State and the UCLA Bruins, which have done it twice. Beating them Gators, chomp, chomp, a chewy chomp, set up the Red River Rivalry Championship Series versus the number one ranked Texas two S's Longhorns. This was a rematch not only of the 2024 Big 12 Championship, in which the Sooners also beat down the Horns 5-1 to to win their ninth Big 12 title, but also a rematch of the 2022 Women's College World Series, in which the Sooners also 
swept the horns by scores of 16 to 1 and 10 to 5. That earned the Sooners their second consecutive World Series title for those keeping score. The Sooners have now beaten Texas 33 times in the last 36 meetings and are 6 and 0 against the Longhorns in the WCWS. Domination, my friends. Now, the Horns were 3 0 in Oklahoma City, allowing just one hit in each game with no runs allowed, including a 10 0 run rule victory over Florida earlier in the week. Texas was, was the first team since Tennessee in 2007 to reach the finals without allowing a run. But the Sooners put a quick end to that nonsense, lighting up the Texas pitching staff for eight runs in each game, powered by the long ball. And as dominant as the bats were, Kelly Maxwell was even more dominant. She improves to 12 and 5 across 20 tournament appearances, 19 starts. She pitched to 1.80 ERA over 108 postseason innings. Sickness. Had 160 Ks while only walking 38, striking out almost 40% of the batters and giving the opposition a batting average of 155. She dominated. What other word could you use? Now, Maxwell did have to sift through a bunch of horse crap during the season from a ton of butthurt poke fans because she transferred. She wanted to go win a, a natty, and she was the missing piece to this team. Even though people were piling on, she never let it get her down. It took her a while to sift through that crap. But once she did, she never looked back, and she got better as the Sooner run got deeper with total domination en route to earning her most valuable player of the tournament. What a way to go out. Props to you. Well done. And the seniors, Jennings, Coleman, Hanson, Boone, May, (laughs) they never lost their final game of the season. How sick is that? Some of them here for four, five years. Domination. That's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Speaking of pretty good, or more like the best to ever do it, Patty the Goat Gasso. OU made the tournament 30 straight seasons every year of Coach Gasso's tenure except 2020 when it didn't happen. Sooners tied with Washington for the longest active postseason run. They've been a national seed for each of the past 16 seasons. And 2024 marks the 17th World Series appearance for the Sooners, who have won five of the past seven titles and six of the last eight. Is there a better coach? No. Rhetorical question. Move on. Now, Texas had entered that game, two with a 43-0 record when scoring first this season. And in the second game, the Horns went up 1-0 in the top of the second. And then that record fell to 43-1. The Horns also finished their run in the Big 12 with losses to OU in both football and softball. You might remember that 34-30 whooping at the Cotton Bowl last October. Good times, people. Good times. And now the Horns with the W are crying about home field advantage in the World Series because they just can't seem to win a game against the Sooners when they get there. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe there was a weird thing going on that made them run the bases weird or made the catcher have two errors and throw, you know, wild ball down the third baseline into the outfield. I don't know. But that home field advantage didn't seem to help the Pokes. 
They got swept out of the World Series. Cotton Bowl didn't seem to help the Shorthorns last October. Is there a better softball facility in the United States? I don't think so. Where were all these people at when the Sooners weren't dominating? Were they crying about the home field advantage now? Has it worked in Nebraska? Basketball where these other tournaments are played? No. And if your horns are ranked number one in the nation and you can't sell enough tickets, they're just down the road, then maybe that's on your fan base. That's not on the venue. I don't want to hear them crying about it. Sooners dominated at home. They dominated at the road on the road. They would dominate anywhere they had to go play. You never heard them crying once about it. So my advice to the horns, shut your cake hole and play better. Speaking of watching them horns get whooped, over 2 million people watched OU beat that Texas ass in game one. And those numbers peaked at 2.5 million in game two, watching the Sooners collecting chip number four. Those are good numbers, people. And a large part of that growth of the game, part of it's because the game has gotten so much better. These athletes are tremendous. They put it out there on the field, and it is exciting to watch. The other part is the domination of this Sooners program and the rewriting of the history books. There's not been a better team across sports the last four, five, six, seven years, whatever it's been. This team has done something special, and they need to be recognized for it, and they are. But I don't know when we're going to see something like this again. That is crazy talk. So once again, congrats to our Sooners and their unprecedented run. Taking that natty. Mm, that is sweet. Four in a row. Well done. Cheers to the Sooners. And just like that, we are less than a month away from making it official with the SEC. Moving in together, I think this is going to be an LTR. So the th Sooners throw up the big four, as in four straight, or deuces to the big 12, leaving their mark on your mark with the last conference championship to be had. Take it. Bye. Au revoir. And now it's moving day. Speaking of moving day to the SEC, the university announced plans for a series of special events that are to take place all around the state. Talking about the move to the SEC conference, which is going to be official on July 1st. Riverwind Casino will sponsor the celebration, featuring a ton of activities for fans on campus in Norman, including SEC network programming, open houses at the Barry Switzer Center, Love's Field. Additional events in OKC and Tulsa. It will culminate with a free and family-friendly party at the Palace. Sooners will celebrate with live music. Prez will be there. Joe C. will be there in a drone show above the field. And at midnight, fans will have their first opportunity to purchase officially licensed OU branded SEC merch as part of the Midnight Madness sale at a special OU Jordan brand shoebox pop-up shop on Owen Field inside the stadium. Pretty cool. You know, I've given the SEC people a lot of crap over the years. I don't ever see myself chanting SEC at a game or anything like that or even rooting for the teams in the conference, but I am completely freaking stoked about this move. I think it's a huge step up in competition. I think it's a huge step up in opportunity. And I cannot wait to see the games each and every week. It's going to be completely and totally awesome. I think our Sooners are primed and ready for that move. And I am absolutely stoked for it. Also, the SEC Network will broadcast from the stadium from 2 to 8 p.m. Paul Feinbaum's show. He's going to kick off the coverage at the stadium from 2 to 6. It's a big deal. It's a BFD. As Joe Biden said, this is a BFD. Well, now that OU and Texas are done with the Big 12, 
They're also done with the Alamo Bowl. The Alamo Bowl wanted to replace its Pac-12 team with either Texas or U, setting up a matchup with one of those schools against the Big 12 team. But that was denied. Um, a plan was in place to have them do it, but Texas and OU and probably the conference all said no. If they aren't selected for the playoffs, they thought they could get them in there, but no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Allowing the Alamo Bowl to take OU or Texas instead of a Pac-12 legacy team would have caused a lot of issues with the SEC Bowls. And a source said, we don't like issues. The Alamo Bowl has selected either Texas or OU in each of the past five seasons, and neither school had interest in playing in a non-SEC affiliated bowl if it didn't make the playoffs. Um, So the solution, they're going to allow the Pac-12 Bowls Alamo Holiday, Las Vegas Sun, LA Independence, and an ESPN Event Bowl to select either a Pac-12 legacy member or Oregon State and Washington State. Let's not forget about that two-team Pac-12. That keeps Oregon, UCLA, SC, Washington, Arizona, ASU, Colorado, and UDA, Cal, Stanford from participating in their new conference bowl games until 2026. So that's fair. That's a that's a workaround for that. Um, but it will not be the Sooners or the Horns. The Alamo Bowl has featured teams from the Pac-12 and Big 12 every season since 2010. Not in 2024, 2025, whatever you want to call it. If it oh, I guess that happens in December, so it will still be 2024. Speaking of bowl games, we just got the college football playoff schedule. And to put it mildly, it's lit, fam. Are you sitting down? If you haven't heard, the action kicks off at 8 p.m. Eastern on Friday, December 20th. Followed by a triple header on Saturday, December 21st. With all four games coming from campuses. The highest four-seeded teams that play that opening week will get to host a football game. And we're going to find out just how popular this new format is going to be. That first weekend of college football playoffs, specifically the Saturday games, will be going head-to-head with an NFL doubleheader featuring the Texans at Chiefs, followed by Steelers at Ravens. All playoff teams from last year, major AFC North battle there, young rising star and CJ Stroud with the Texans at the Super Bowl champion Chiefs. Those are big time NFL games. It's going to be interesting to see how they do against big time college football games. I can't even believe I'm saying that, but I am going to go out on a limb here and say this college football playoff will be the only thing capable of competing with the juggernaut, the ratings juggernaut that is the NFL. I mentioned those first four college playoff games are going to be on campuses. You know how rocking that is going to be? It's going to be the biggest thing to ever hit college football. I mean, you look at the OU Texas game at the Cotton Bowl, and it is crazy. It feels big. You look at some of these games, Florida and Georgia, how big it feels. You know, Georgia and Bama, Ohio State and Michigan. Four of these campuses are going to get to host a playoff game. And not just a bowl game, not just a regular season game, a playoff game. Win to keep going, lose, and your season's over. You get nothing, you lose. Good day, sir. I think it's going to be massive. I cannot wait. It is going to be so, so good. Oh, and then the next round of games will feature a standalone on New Year's Eve, followed by another triple header on new year's day that's a tuesday and a wednesday and then the semifinals will take place on thursday january 9th at the orange bowl and friday january 10th at the cotton bowl at jero world and then 10 days later we will crown a legit college football champion in atlanta on monday january 20th (laughs) oh baby come on Playoff, college football, 
through the month of January. How sweet it is. I also believe the success of these playoffs will not only rival NFL ratings, it might surpass them. It's also big picture here, people. It's also going to push the NFL towards making that 18th game happen. That's inevitable. But what it's also going to do, once I play that 18th game, it should come with another bye week, which will extend the regular season to 20 weeks, which will then push the start of the NFL playoffs back a week, which will, in time, push the Super Bowl back to President's Day weekend. Why is that a big deal? That will finally make the day after the Super Bowl a national holiday. Giving cats a chance to sleep off their Super Bowl hangover in real time. It's going to happen, people. And it's going to be meta. And this college football playoff will be the thing that really kickstarts that. Trust. Watch. It's going to happen. And... If this college football playoff goes the way everyone thinks it will, they will expand to at least 14 teams in the next couple of years. It's coming. Told you when we started last season, taking this last year, because it's the last that we've seen college football as it was. This new gen is coming, and it is going to be dynamite. So with the championship is... In Atlanta this year. Next year, the championship game will be at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. And the word is that it is a lock that the 2027 championship will be held at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. Can you imagine the madness? That is going to be a party. I was in Vegas last summer and I went to Allegiant for USA versus Mexico in the Nations League semifinal. And it was absolutely bonkers. People getting lubricated all day. And I don't know how many listeners are familiar with Vegas, but you get out at Mandalay Bay and they close the bridge and it's all this foot traffic that just walks over to the stadium. People playing music, banging drums in the street, having fun, having their pops, doing whatever they are going to do. And it is going to be Bonk City. It is going to be a scene, a vibe. Can you dig it? Yes, I can. Oh, baby. (laughs) Look at me. I'm already in 2027. I'm freaking out on this thing. It's going to be so huge for college football. And it seems like a natural progression. I don't know how it took us so long to get here. We'll hit that in a little bit. But it's going to be good. New Orleans, Dallas, and Miami have emerged as the front runner for the title games uh, in the ensuing years. No confirmation on that, but it will rotate. And this thing is going to be huge. And it's hilarious that just a couple of years ago, they were screaming, tradition, we can't move these bowl games. It's tradition. We can't expand to a playoff tradition. We can't move the conferences. Tradition. Turns out... You just needed to add a couple zeros to the paydays for everybody. Turns out there was more money, and that got everybody motivated. Shocker. You get those fat paychecks and all the tradition concerns just go away into the air. Interesting. Speaking of payouts and adding zeros, the numbers from the 2023 payouts to the Big Ten and SEC members were released in May. And according to Scott, Dr. Mann of The Athletic, he reported that the Big Ten saw revenues jump by more than $34 million in 2023, with the 12 teams receiving just over $60 million bucks each. Buku Dolores. He also reported that the SEC cashed out their 14 teams at almost $52 million per. Righteous bucks. Those numbers will surely jump with the addition of OU and Texas. And those numbers will surely jump with USC, UCLA, Oregon, Ital. They're going to jump. 
Surely they will. Don't call me Shirley. Overall revenue for the SEC came in at almost $853 million, up 50 mil from the previous year before adding these money makers, bringing in some major money makers. Both conferences expect to demolish those numbers in the upcoming fiscal year. It's good to be the king. That's a little Mel Brooks for the people. Get hip, nerds. So trust me, even when they say it's not about the money, it's about the money. It's always about the money. That obviously was a huge reason for the jump to the SEC. But another reason, game times. Should have been a simple fix, but it wasn't. Now you're crying about it. The Sooners were sick and tired of not getting any primetime games, or at least not the 11 a.m. start time, even for their biggest game. Making our way back up to Nebraska the first time in how many years? Oh, 11 a.m. Oh, you Texas? Oh, 11 a.m. Well, just under a month out of the official start to the SEC tenure, we're already getting to sleep in. Mm, isn't that nice? including on October 12th. You know what day that is. The first Red River rivalry with Oklahoma and Texas as SEC members will kick off at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time on October 12th on either ABC or ESPN. The OU Texas is traditionally an 11 a.m. local kick. Moving that back to the prime SEC slot, Going to give folks enough time to slam some deep fried Twinkies and turkey legs. And probably a few adult beverages or a poppy. Call me poppy. But wait, there's more. OU's first three games are either night games or afternoon kickoffs. That is what I am talking about. That's what Sooner Nation is talking about. OU will open the season on Friday night against Temple at 6 p.m. Central Time in week one. Week two, Sooner is another primetime kick against Houston at 6.45 p.m. Central. Then in week three, they host Tulane for a 2.30 p.m. Central time kickoff. Suck it, Big 12. New conference, new QB, who dis? Sooner State of Mind family, you're going to love this one. According to David Hale, Jackson Arnold, Mr. JFA, and the OU quarterback, situation is a tier four. Hmm. Now, I get that Arnold only has one start under his belt, but with all those tools Arnold possesses and the depth behind him at the position and the arsenal of offensive weaponry and that defense is going to create short fields and turnovers, this article smells like clickbait to me. Poppycock, I tells you, poppycock. Yeah, I'll break out some old-timey vernacular here and there. Sometimes. Now, I'm not saying there won't be some struggles and some mistakes, but JFA is legit, and I'm predicting he ends up on one of those top two tiers by season's end. But he and the Sooners have to go out and prove it, which I think they will. That's TBD. But tier four, come on. Speaking of OU quarterbacks, OU snagged Steel Wazzle out of the transfer portal. You lose a QB with a name like General Booty, you need to replace him with a good name. Although General Booty can never re be replaced as far as best names in athletics go, or maybe just best names all over. Come on, General Booty. At least Steele is in the conversation. Wazzle was previously at Akron, and he was a three-star prospect in the 2023 class. He is from Choctaw, Oklahoma, so he is returning home. Wazzle will have to compete for reps in an already deep QB room behind JFA. Casey Thompson, the grizzled vet, great name. Michael Hawkins, Jr., and Brandon Zerberg. Hooray! I got your tier four right here. Oh. And as of now, all tier fours are ahead of Wazzle on the depth chart. But I can respect a dude 
that is not afraid of competition, and you never know when your number will be called. Hopefully that's not for three more years, but either way, welcome to Sooner Nation. Welcome to the Sooner State of Mind family. Some more Sooners QB news. This of the 2026 varietal. On three is predicting that Jaden O'Neal, the 6'3", 200-pound, talented four-star quarterback from California, is predicted to land with the Sooners. Now, to be totally honest, I can't put too much stock in a commitment with 2026 so far away, but he will be welcomed with open arms if he follows through on said commitment. Even so, with Kevin Speary still looking fully locked in with the Sooners for 2025, the future definitely looks bright in the quarterback room for the Sooners. Tier 4, STFU. Bro. <laughs> Bro. Speaking of tears, no, not the ones dripping from the shorthorn eyeballs. I'm talking tears. The EA Sports College Football 25 payouts have been announced. And for the top tiers, schools are getting paid. EA Sports is paying colleges for the CFB 25 based on a tier system using AP poll finishes from the past 10 years. Tier 1 gets paid out over 99000 Tier 2, just under 60000 Tier T, Tier 3, Tier T. T tur T tur T tur under 40 grand and tier four just under 10 grand. Now the Sooners are in that top tier along with Bama, Ohio State, Clemson, Notre Dame, Georgia, LSU, Michigan, Oregon. The Pokes somehow got in there. Penn State, Uda, and Iowa. FYI, University of Spoiled Children and Texas fall into the second tier. That's due to rankings, not preference. EA Sports College Football 25 drops on July 19th with several different pay tiers, shockingly, depending on your sickness tier. Speaking of sick, the trailer for the game is out and it looks incredible. I might have to kick down for a new Xbox system just for this game. Needless to say, I am pretty stoked about it. You think that's all the stoke? No, I got pockets full of stoke for the people. More stoke for a Sooner fan. Three OU players landed on the 2025 College Hall of Fame ballot. Coach Josh Heupel, Rocky Kalmus, and George Cumbie. Now, Coach Hype and Rocky were both members and major contributors to that 2000 National Championship Sooner squad. And Cumbie was a three-time All-American for Barry Switzer back in the day, late 70s. We hope to see all three of those guys join the other 23 players and coaches from OU in the Hall of Fame, including Dewey Selman, who will be the 24th OU player inducted later this year. And a little more former Sooner news, and this one has got me totally stoked as well. Sterling Shepard. We'll be joining Baker Mayfield on the Tampa Bay Bucks for the 2024 NFL season. After the injuries the last couple of years, we thought that might be a wrap on Shep's playing days. Turns out, like most New Yorkers, he just heads down to Florida. I love the fit on this squad. They already have a great receiving core with Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Trey Palmer, and others. If Shep can stay healthy, there should be plenty of shaking and bacon going on down in Tampa. Good luck to our Sooners coming up this fall. Speaking of shaking, a little sidebar here. If you're hip to dead and company and you want to know what's shaking on Shakedown Street, get your ass to the sphere in Las Vegas and check out one of those shows. That is if you want your mind completely freaking blown. An amazing show. So good. Steady the art. The sphere is absolutely bonkers. Do yourself a favor and get down there. And you know why else? Because any summer days you spend in Vegas will get you days closer to the start of the college football season. We're just 84 days away. Or 2014 hours, you decide, from 
our Oklahoma Sooners taking the field for the first time as members of the SEC when they host the Temple Owls under the Friday Night Lights at Owen Stadium. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose, and I can't wait. Make sure you like and subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify so you do not miss out on any of the good stuff. Also, head on over to Believe.com. That's B-L-E-A-V.com. Go to shows. Type in Sooner State of Mind. You are locked. We have a ton of great content. Every team, every topic, everywhere. Believe.com. If you want to watch Sooner State of Mind, head on over to YouTube and search the football dudes. We are there. Like and subscribe. Comment on the shows. Tell me what you want to hear. Tell me what you love. Tell me what you hate. When you talk about the hate, it better be the horns. Sooner State of Mind is brought to you by Bet Online. My name is Casey Mallon, and I am in a Sooner State of Mind.